Right, so Unreal 5 uh, had this working color space here, which sort of uh, intrigued me um, as I've gone mad recently with uh, color management and color spaces and all that goodies. Um, and I finally received some word back from Epic about what this is about. Um, so I'm going to tell you because it's not fair that they tell me and I don't and that's that so I will be telling you what this does and what this means so um, it's the start or as they refer to as phase one of the implementation of uh, sort of color spaces in Unreal so um, most people do should know what a working color space is in other 3D apps you know this is you know all your textures get converted to this and then your your you know and then everything's calculated in your working space and then everything is changed from that to whatever your monitor is um so this is sort of the start of that um implementation at the moment it's epic has the working part and the input part down pat uh, they don't have the output part down pat yet um and i'm assuming that's going to be a matter of like <clears throat> that they need uh some sort of uh, system for both working in movie render cube but also in actual video games. So I'm going to show you how to do the input part of that so that when the output part comes to that um, I'll make a second video and then it'll connect together. Now if you have no idea what working color space is or anything like that chances are you probably don't need to use it. Um, if these it, like aces CG and all that look foreign to you chances are you probably don't need it so it you might be better off just not more bothering about this um, otherwise uh, there's quite a few videos Netflix has a very good video about it but um, it's just keeping sort of consistency and you know sort of more color than what you need to then pop down and it's it's hard to explain and this is not the video for that so um, at the moment, it seems to have a hard-coded sRGB or something um, in place. So I don't know if actually switching this to anything else works. I've already done render tests and stuff, and it doesn't do anything. And Epic says it doesn't do anything. Um, so that's all good. But what we can look at is how to import textures. So I've got my, I've got some Spartans here. Um, so we're going to need our texture program. So in this case, Substance Painter. Uh, my program of choice um, and you need to what we're going to do is export in aces cg so aces cg is a wider color gamut than uh rec 709 or sagb or your monitor so i'll put them two so you can compare them uh aces cg is not a viewing transform or your viewing gamut so you're not supposed to view it raw um nothing can display that amount of colors the idea is you've got more colors than what you would ever need down the pat track so that if you're doing you know you know you're doing um hdr which has a wider color gamut um or something like that then you have that extra wiggle room so to speak all right so i'm just making an adjustment to my uh previously recorded video because uh substance isn't my uh expertise um so i uh, when you go to change your uh, color management settings. When you click on Open Color I/O, you also need to switch the color configuration to Aces, um, probably the newest configuration. Um, and that changes a few things, but you'll see your working color space actually switches to Aces CG, and the floating point images actually automatically defaults to a Aces CG as well. Um, so make sure you do that, um, and then the rest of my video will uh, still make sense. Next, what we need to do is actually make sure our channels are in 32-bit. So when we go onto our texture list and then the texture set settings here, uh, we just need to make sure all the channels we're using are set to 32-bit float. So that's this little cog drop down and you know, for black and white channels like the roughness and metallic and stuff, it can be a linear. Um, you know, we only want one value, but uh, if it's something like the normal map, or the base color, then we want RGB 32-bit. So once we've done that, it's going to recompute um, our model there, but that should be all good. Now we can export. So file, export textures. Uh, now your output template, if I have one here, there. All right, it needs to be set to EXR, and it needs to, uh, your only option will be 32 float. Um, 
but yeah, make sure it's set to EXR like that. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Um, I'm going to change the file type here to based on output template. Um, alternatively, you could just select the EXR in here instead. Um, but I'm going to just go based on because I have a template already and I'm going to hit export and it's going to actually put ACES CG in the file names, which is going to be really handy to help remember it. All right, now we have that exported. What I can do is go ahead and import these. So here we go. Um, blah, 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 blah. Where are they? There we go. So I have UDIMs for these guys. So I'm going to select like that. One, one, one. Alrighty. So make sure if you are using UDIMs, make sure that uh, virtual textures is enabled in Unreal, but I only need to drag in the 1001 or the first texture in the UDIM. Let it import. Alrighty, and they're probably not going to look correct to start with, um, unless, uh, I don't think Unreal can uh, detect the color space, but here we have, you know, a very wide <laughs> image because of the UDIMs. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is, because these are 32-bit, um, Unreal will sort of store them rather large, so what I can do is switch this to HDR compressed. Um, which will keep it in 32 bits, but will compress it, which will just be a little better for RAM and what have you. Uh, and just loading in the viewport. And it looks like it changes the color here, and it, it, it obviously changed the look here, but uh, in practice I found that uh, that doesn't actually change the color at all, so I, I don't know why it looks like it has. Um, next, what we want to do is under the texture setting. So we have this sRGB one that you usually untick if it's like a roughness map or something. Um, but if we go into advanced now, and then there's actually this source color settings, <coughs> which is new, which I think is interesting. So if we drop that down, what we can do is we have our encoding override. So that is our gamma. Um, which is like brightness, um, and then our color space. So what we can do is like we can say this is, it's linear, 32 bits EXR is always linear. And then for the color space, we can say it is ACES CG. And then we can hit save. And then wait, because EXRs take forever and I'm not. Ta-da! Um, obviously, the, the viewports and everything in Unreal at the moment are hard-coded for sRGB, so it, it's going to look the same, and that's the whole point of color management, is to look identical. Um, so if I go HDR compressed, save... I need to find a better way to do this. And this, I'm going to go HDR compressed. Linear. I think the default for um, these kind of textures, uh, the default for EXRs is linear anyway, I believe. So it's not a huge deal. Um, all right, just like that. So now this helmet um, on my character here, uh, that is not in ACES CG. Um, that's just in sRGB. So. Uh, we can, I guess we can use that as a test to see if this actually works. So I should have, no, I closed them. Let me find the, here we go. All right, so I should, they should look the same, right? So base color, emission, and pack map. Save that, and they do, they match. So our color management is working because despite the uh, armor of this gentleman being much wider color gamut, uh, they still look the same, just about. So there you have it. Now, uh, as soon as Unreal implements the other half of this, which is exporting in uh, wider color gamuts, uh, then I will definitely be covering that and showing you how you can use that in something like DaVinci Resolve and the benefits of that workflow. I may even just re-record this one. So it's like one video that covers the whole thing. But for the time being, uh, if you have, I think the most useful part 
for this at the moment is you don't have to re-export all your t if you're you know you, your uh, Aces CG and stuff is very common for textures and what have you in VFX and stuff like that and if you put importing into Unreal there's no need to convert the textures color space prior to using it on Unreal now you can just use the textures you already have which I guess saves some time um, so cool just thought I would quickly cover it for you guys.